Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements project, we'll be doing this old-fashioned sketch style look. Now, this is from a photograph, and it's actually fairly simple and fairly straightforward to do. I've made this as simple as I can for you. A couple of special things in here. We have a special paper texture in behind, and also a special brush. We'll talk more about using the special brush when we get down to that part of the training links for the paper and for the brush are on the video support page so just go there you'll find the link for that in the description okay let's go ahead and take a look and see how this is done let me just get that out of the way now this is from two pictures here is our paper right there and then here is the image the photograph that we're working from first thing you want to do is to take the paper and then just grab the background layer and drag it over onto your other image. Now if your image isn't floating like this, if your images are docked like that, just go up to the edit menu, come down to preferences and general and make sure that these two check boxes are checked. Allow floating documents and enable floating document window docking. Once that's done you can then either float your windows or dock them back up like that. So easy enough. So I have mine as floating windows. So we drag the paper over to this document. We can now close the paper file out. That's taken care of. And then in here, take the paper. I'm just going to put it so it's centered, you know, kind of like that, and move to about the top. So it just snaps to the top. Right about there is fine. Just kind of a nice plain area on that paper. Okay, stage one is done. Next, let's make two copies of our old man here. Just drag them up onto the new layer button a couple of times. There we go, two copies. We want the paper underneath those two copies and this is the original background. That's my safety. So just hide that one. In case we mess things up, we can always go back to that layer. Alright, let's now hide the top one of these and come down to the first one. That's right there. So there's the that one layer. Everything else is hidden. We're now going to apply filters onto this layer, just with filtering on this layer and some masking as well. So go up here to filter, come to the filter gallery right here. In the filter gallery, the one that you want is stylized. This is the glowing edges. It, it's an interesting filter by itself, but we'll take this a couple of steps further. So there's our glowing edges filter. I have mine set here at edge width 2, edge brightness 6, and smoothness five. That gives you that particular look. And choose OK. There we go. Doesn't look right yet, obviously, but there's more to do on this one. This is kind of a negative, so we want to invert this to make it a positive again. So filter adjustments and invert right there. OK, it's now positive. I also want this in just black and white. So let's take the color out of this, go up to enhance, and convert to black and white. Choose OK. And there we go. That takes care of that. This now nice black and white image. I also want this blending in with our background color in here. So we need to blend this layer with our layer underneath, and that's using the blending modes. And the one you want for this is the linear burn right there, and it blends that in. Already we're getting very close to our final look. Not too bad. I'm going to pull the window open a bit here so I have some space around this. Now I don't want to have this image going clear to the edges like that. I don't want that tire in there. So I'll add a layer mask to this layer. Click on the layer mask button. Here's our layer mask. Now white shows and black hides. So let's go to our paintbrush. There it is. Make sure you have black. And then over here we have our brushes. This is just the default brush set in there as you can see right now. And I have a brush. Let's make it about... Well, maybe about 200, I think, is a good size for this. There we go, 200. That's pretty good. Okay, now I'm on the layer mask. Look for that light blue outline. If you don't see it, click over here until you see your light blue outline. So, 
black paint, big soft brush, layer mask, and then just pan on that and you can see what happens. Wherever I'm painting, it hides it. Let's just take out some of that. And I'll take out that wheel right there. And take a little bit across the top, let it fade out. And take it down here so I'm not getting clear down to the edge. It's just kind of fading in. Okay, there's first step. That's our first layer. We'll do the same basic idea on our second layer up here, but using a different filter. So I'll go up here to Filter and Filter Gallery again. This time, let's go up to Artistic and choose Colored Pencil. And on this one, I have the pencil width at 3, stroke pressure at 3, and paper brightness all the way up at 50, clear to the top on that. And that gives us kind of this, this pencil sketch look. Choose OK. And that's sitting on top. Once again, we need to blend this with what's underneath so we see our colors through that. So let's go to our blending and this time I'll be using multiply on the blending. There we go. There's our multiply effect. Notice that our tire is showing back in here again and some other stuff is showing. So I want to use the same trick we did here. Let's make a layer mask on this. Here's our oh, wrong button. There we go. Let's get rid of that. So layer mask there. That's better. So I'll go up here and layer mask just like that. Our brush is still set, paint is still set, and exact same thing, we're going to paint around the edges and remove some of that. I'm going to come in a little bit further in here, so I want to leave a little bit of this illustration showing through. Take our tire out. Where it's real dark there, kind of take those dark spots out. And this time again, we're painting in further on this with the black, so it leaves just the center section really showing you a little bit of this hand. You can kind of see the shape right there. There's the hand and there's the face. That's kind of what I'm leaving on this. Okay, that's part two of this. We now need to put in that kind of sketch paper effect, that sketchy effect. And that is done with using a special custom paintbrush to do that. Now to get the brush, there's the link for the brush in the video support page again and you go to that link download that brush that it comes down as a zip file simply unzip that file to a spot on your hard drive and then you go ahead and install that right down here click on brush go up here this little button right there click on that and then come down to where it says load brushes I already have mine up here see mine's in my little Photoshop brushes folder. When you unzip it, you'll see this folder, and then inside that folder, you'll find the actual brush set, which is that one right there. So unzip it to a location, and then let me just show you that one more time. Go to your brushes, click on that arrow, little little arrow and little lines right there. Load brushes, and click on it and choose load. It then loads in that brush set. Now this brush set is only going to be loaded while you have Photoshop open right now. When you close it down, this is going to go away. You have to reload it each time. But this keeps you from getting too many brushes on your computer, which kind of slows things down. So I want the very top brush here. makes things real easy. Double click on that. And there's that brush. It's huge, as you can see. So we need to come down here and adjust our size. I'll set this one for 200 as well. It's a pretty good size. There we go. So there's that brush. That's a special brush and it spins itself around as you brush on it. We want to have this one on a new layer though. So go up over here, click on new layers. There's a new layer above these layers and then I'm just going to go around the outside here and just click a few times around the outside. Just kind of walking around the image like that. There we go. So just kind of a little walk around of these little brush stroke kind of things. If you have a little more overlapping, it looks a bit more interesting. So make sure you have some overlap on these things. There we go. Pretty easy. Just a little quick walk around. Now it doesn't look so good right now because we need to blend this in with that background layer as well. So again, let's go up here and we'll change our blending mode. This time I want to use the soft light mode and that really kind of knocks that back. As you can see there, there's that kind of brush stroke effect. Now I also want to 
pull this back a bit. I don't want to have these strokes really in too much on the illustration itself. I want it mostly on the outside. So once again, we'll use a new layer mask for that right there. And let's change our brushes back to the default brushes. There we go. And just scroll down and we'll choose the 200 soft brush. That's pretty good. Layer mask, black paint, and then just come in here and just kind of clean up a little bit inside of the image itself. Don't clean it all up. Leave a bit of a mess in there. A little sloppier is better than a little cleaner in this instance. And I'm going to come out here and just kind of soften up the edges on some of these. With a soft edge brush, you can easily do this. And there we go. That's it. Actually, as you can see, it's actually very quick and very easy to do this effect. It's just knowing the right sequence to get this proper look. So there we go. There's how to do this kind of old-fashioned sketch effect very quickly from a nice photograph. Now, to make this work out really well, the more interesting your photograph, the better the effect is going to be. If it's a real plain thing, like a you know plain brick house, it's not going to look that interesting. But the more interesting your picture, the more interesting the final artwork effect is. But there it is. That's how to do the old-fashioned sketch technique. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 